It's Filter Free Friday, y'all. <laughs> I'm glad y'all here. Today is uh, Independence Day observed here in the U.S. And I remember uh, that in 2011, on this day, I was burying my mother. And I was also closing on a house, this house, in uh, this neighborhood. And this week, my uh, my neighbors have put little flags out in front of in front of everyone's home. And when I saw them, I thought it was really cute. And it reminded me of how much I love being an American. And uh, just like everything else, I love. I am probably the largest largest critic. A couple weeks ago, I talked about. Um, NASCAR and the challenges that um, Bubba has being one of the first African Americans to to practice um, being a race car driver here in the U.S. It's it's not a sport that is typically lended itself to um, a lot of racial a lot of racial diversity and just if you haven't been following the story um there was a noose found in one of the thousands of stalls garage stalls and it happened to be found in uh, in bubba's stall and the fbi did an investigation and they determined that uh it was no racial intent or malice towards bubba bubba came out he thanked the fbi I said, you know, makes total sense because Bubba is a tiller in the garden, meaning he's, there's people who are always willing to go forge a new path for us. And honestly, I gotta say, it's one of the topics that I don't like talking about a lot um, when somebody does something um, just completely ignorant and hateful, like form a noose or kill a person. But the reason I bring it up today is because um, the owner this week was selling a Bubba noose or the Bubba rope, excuse me, don't let me get it wrong, the Bubba rope on Facebook. They had also instituted a day where you could express your heritage by purchasing Confederate flags, even though NASCAR has outlawed the use of Confederate flags. And so completely egregious, open, willful destructiveness. And whenever there is willful destructiveness, I describe that as a, as a shark bite. I got the analogy from Dr. Aaron Reeves. You know, when somebody gets bitten by a shark, there's a whole bunch of support that comes to them. No one says, oh, well, are you sure it's a shark bite? I'm not so sure that hurt that much. Shark bites have lots of support. But do you know how many people die each year from, from shark bites around the globe? I think the number is less than 10 and, and significantly less than 10. But mosquitoes, little mosquito bites, that constant nagging are quite irritating. And <clears throat> in the individual level, one mosquito bite here and there is truly just an irritant. But if you look at the system of dangers associated with mosquito bites, you'll, you'll see that every year across the globe, almost a million people die from mosquito-borne illnesses. Malaria, West Nile, and other diseases that mosquitoes carry in their little bodies that cumulatively cause us um, far more trauma and devastation than we can ever imagine. But why am I talking about mosquitoes and sharks and all of this ridiculousness on Filter Free Friday? Well, <clears throat> there's a book coming out called Black Fatigue, and it highlights uh, that the, the true challenge of being black in America is not necessarily, let me, let me change my language. It is the overt discrimination like Bubba Ropes, but it is more damaging in these subtle mosquito bite kind of ways. You know, when I moved into this house, 
There was a man who lived across the street. His name was John. And John told Sunshine, the owner of the house, that she should not take us seriously because we couldn't afford this house. You all have heard me tell the story about the one family who had kiddos the same age as my son. Business owner here in my town. Her business is inside the complex for the place for which I was working. She had the audacity to say to her children that they could not play with my son until they figured out what we did for a living. And if I were to sell my house today, I would need to go through great pain to make sure that no one knew a black person lived here if I wanted the valuation uh, to be that of a property for which white people live in. Little mosquito bites. So when I look at this flag outside my, my door, here's what I wanna leave with you today. Whenever you're trying to do anything, there's gonna be about 20% of the people who, who are inclusive, who are empathetic and compassionate and who are willing to use critical thought to create more equitable and fair and just systems. You're always gonna have 20% of the people. You're gonna have about 10% or less of the folks who are just willfully ignorant, willfully destructive, willfully hateful. The vast majority of the, the rest of the people in the world just kind of go with the flow. What's, what's most popular? What's gonna be the path of least resistance? What's going to require the least amount of emotional toil, intellectual horsepower on their part? Now, there's garden tillers, garden planters, and weed pullers in all of these groups. But here's what I need you to know. As we are trying to embark on social change, very often the 20% will go and try to figure out how they can do something about Mr. John. They will spend their energy and effort trying to figure out how they can do something about the owner of owners in NASCAR who are selling bubble ropes. They, they go try to figure out how to fix these egregious acts of exclusionary hateful practices. But Malcolm Gladwell says that 26% is the tipping point. 26 that the critical mass point at which everything shifts and turns in favor of what you want to see happen is at 26%. So if we got about 20% of the people who already kind of see it, why don't we focus on all those people in the middle who ain't doing quite a thing? Because here's what I've noticed in recent weeks. My neighbors, they saying hello for the first time in nine years, some of them. When I'm on the track, they're not averting their eyes. I don't feel like I have to whistle Vivaldi uh, to keep people from being frightened just by seeing my skin. Little things, I know. Little things I didn't ask for. Big things we still need to do police brutality needs to be addressed. Internalized racial oppression needs to be reduced. Breonna Taylor's murderers still need to be arrested. But on this observation of Independence Day, remember, mosquitoes kill far more people every year than sharks ever could. It's filter-free Friday, y'all. We got work to do.